Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the men of your United States Army. entitled Special Mission, an outstanding story of courage. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, here is a special message to the high school class of 52. The United States Army, the senior service, needs bright young men, men with ambition who want to continue their education. If you can fill the bill, the Army will send you to one of its many fine technical schools, for the Army trains its men for such interesting and exciting fields as radio, radar, electronics, mechanics, meteorology, and many, many others. You'll not only get the finest training in the world, but you'll have an excellent opportunity for a satisfying career. Your army is growing fast, and bright young men can grow with it. Why not get all the facts about what the army has to offer you? Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. And now your army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production... Special mission. It's a big room filled entirely with file cabinets. It's a silent room, dusty, dark, and dull. Dull until you open any one of the cabinets and pick a folder at random from its closely packed confines. Then as you start reading the neatly typed pages, your surroundings are swept away in a fast-moving undertow of time. You're carried back away from the room, the dust, the silence, and you find yourself entering another room, a smaller, brighter room. The place is London. It's August of the year 1944. Well, top of the morning to you. You're two minutes late, Major. Your watch is fast. <laughs> Hi, Bill. Good to see you. Sit down. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Well, how's it feel to be a full colonel? Okay. You have a good rest? Uh, here, have one of mine. Oh, thank you. Well, what's the scoop? Got a job for you. I figure. Big job, plenty important. There are over half a million German troops in Norway. They've got to be prevented from being shifted to the Western Front. If we can cut their transportation lines, the only way they can move is by sea. The British Navy will take care of that. And I get the job of cutting the transportation lines, huh? You had the group that takes a crack at it. How many in the group? About 45. You'll have two other officers with you, Tom Sather and Glenn Farnsworth. I think you know Farnsworth. A demolition expert. That's right. Sather's an Arctic explorer. He'll be mighty handy in that kind of country. How soon do we leave? You'll leave for Scotland tonight. We've set up a training headquarters on the slopes of Ben Nevis. You'll get special ski training oh, a and... a thorough workout. Oh, well, that's right. Hmm. You'll have members of the Norwegian underground for your instructors. Now, let's have a look at the map. Okay, fellas, okay, okay. School's out. <laughs> Consider yourselves graduated. We've had five months to learn our job. Tonight we go to work. I'm not going to make any speeches. You all know what the score is. With the help of God, some luck, and the Norwegian underground, we'll come through all right. Now we'll be going over in three planes, 16 men to a plane. Group one will assemble at 2,200 hours. It's not good. We're icing up badly. And this stuff, I'm not sure where we are. You want to turn back? Well, I don't want to, but 
It's the only sensible thing to do. You can't jump in this stuff, and I don't know how much longer I can fly in it. Okay, you're the driver. Swing her around. Hello, Bill. Tough luck. Well, you can't help things like that. Weather stinko everywhere. Now, continue your training, and we'll let you know when to try again. You know, this is beginning to get a little monotonous. Oh, Tom, you speak the truth. Yea, verily. Ten hours of bouncing around in that bucket for nothing. That makes two strikes. That still leaves us one, guys. I suppose majors are just naturally optimistic. Yeah, they have to be, Glenn. To keep their subordinates out of the slough of despond. Now the bird's a poet. What do you say we take him out and bury him in a snowdrift? That sounds like an excellent idea. Yeah, you boys don't have any respect for rank. None whatever. Now, be careful. I have 11 Brooklyn Dodger fans in my group. Oh, we give up. I've just gotten word from the colonel. Next time we try, you two will ride with me. Doesn't trust you, hmm? No, he uses his head. He figures if we have to bail out in lousy weather, the chances of the three of us linking up will be much better if we bail out of the same plane. A very intelligent man, the colonel. There you go. Bucking again. I can tell you is that we're over the northern part of Norway, north of Namsis. If you're going to go, you're going to have to go now. I'm getting low on gas. Lovely night. <laughs> Peachy. You're sure we're over land? Yeah, we picked up a signal. If you don't get out pronto, you're apt to come down in Sweden. All right, take her down as low as you dare. Roger. Good luck and happy Easter. Thanks. You? Yeah. Well, mighty lucky we latched up in this. Yeah, a real howler. Got any idea where we are? No. Let's start looking for the others. That snow must be about four feet deep. Yeah, I know. We're on a mountain slope. Let's start moving down. Then I... I don't know what's happened to the others. The chances are they didn't give it a try. Anyhow, the 16 of us will have to go it alone. Major, you got any idea where we are? Sure, Sergeant. We're in Norway. <laughs> Tom, Captain Sather has our position pinned down pretty well. We're not too far off the beam. In fact, landing up here in these hills has undoubtedly saved us a lot of grief. Now, you see those peaks off to the southeast? Well, right between those peaks, there's a lake. And as soon as it gets dark, that's where we're headed. We've got about an hour to wait. Now, keep moving around as much as you can, but stay close and stay in these woods. Uh, Sergeant, I want four men along the timber line. See that they're relieved every 15 minutes. Any questions? Okay, keep on your feet and keep moving. Glenn? Tom, crawl up here. Now, there's the lake. You can just make out the rim. All right, now look down there. Now, no, 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 more to the left. That's the light. That's the end, hmm? Yeah, it should be. I'm going down alone to make contact. If I'm not back in an hour, you'll know things didn't pan out. In that case, you're to clear out of here and follow the alternate plan. Why go down alone, Bill? Take a couple of men with you. And if anything goes wrong, you'll have a chance to get out. Yeah, and warn every Nazi in the area that they've got company. This way, if anything gets snafu'd, you jokers will still have a chance to get the job done. Okay, now check your watches. It's now 2200. If I'm not back by 2310, start moving north. You hear any shooting, clear out. Uh, the password will be heat wave. I missed the main road. Could I stay for the night? Who are you? Where did you come from? I'm a fisherman from Trondheim. 
All right. All right. Come in. Come in. Uh, oh, that's better. <clears throat> Half frozen. The fire will warm you. Uh, quite a lake here. How's the fishing? To tell you the truth, it is... Ah, uh, the fishing is particularly good the winter. Oh, that's the best news I've, I've heard all day. We had almost given up hope of seeing you. <laughs> I nearly forgot to write words. Where did you come from? Where are your men? Uh, are we alone here? Only my wife. She is in bed. I am Carl, and I would like to shake your hand. Well, I'm Bill. <laughs> Glad to know you, Carl. Uh, my men are on the ridge line up and back. They will be safe here until I've had time to let our friends know you have arrived. Good, good. Uh, how long will it take you to notify your friends? By nightfall tomorrow, you will be able to start. Quite a hike, isn't it? Quite. About 100 kilometers. Uh, uh, how many pairs of skis will you need? Uh, Sixteen. And as many hand sleds to carry the explosives. So few to do such a big job. Well, perhaps it is better that way. Best we can do right now. Here's the Northland Railway, the only line that connects the North and the South. If we can blow this bridge right here, we're going to badly disrupt their transportation. That's part of our job. Men from the underground understand that. I've explained it all to them. They will guide you to the bridge and then help you to escape. Well, that's only our first objective. After that's done, we've got to destroy a mile and a half of track at this key station near Snarza. <laughs> when you come to do a job, you do a job, eh? <laughs> All right. Our men will take you. Good. And the sooner we get started, the better. There's the bridge. A bridge of great workmanship and beauty. Is it not so, Anselmo? You read too many books. Only got two guards at each end. Hans, what do you make of it? Don't they usually have it better protected than that? Uh, sir, uh, it's Sunday. On Sunday, relax and they are confident. Oh, not much activity at their post down there. The whole place looks asleep. Tom, take six men. Get rid of the guards. Uh, sir, if I may beg your pardon, uh, we guides can take care of the guards while you concentrate on the explosives. We would be honored, sir, and there will be no warning, I promise you. Okay, Hans, that'll be a big help. Uh, don't bungle it. Uh, sir, that is something we never bungle. What are those guys going to do? Wait till the guards die of old age? Ah, no, 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 no. Keep your shirt on, Glenn. They know what they're doing. And Hans is some boy. Well, they all are. They've been fighting these cookies a lot longer than we. What do we do if they louse it? We keep cool, Glenn. We stay right here and keep cool. Look, they're coming up over the side of the bridge. Get your head down. Mm. Wow. That was quick work. All right, Glenn, you and Sergeant Rowe and your party will work on the span. Tom, we'll take the left. If the alarm's given, fall back to this point. Let's go. How is it up top? Okay. Maroney, put the charge a little higher. Hurry it up. What is it, Sergeant? Four of them and a non-com coming up the road. I'm going to change the guard. Manili, hurry it up! Glenn, your detonator's all set? Yeah, right here. All right, everybody down flat. As soon as it's over, on the double up to the timber line. Hurry, sir, hurry. That they've reached the bridge. They know something is wrong. Hold on to your hats. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production of Special Mission. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Did you ever stop to wonder why your United States Army has such a long tradition of victory? Well, the secret is a very simple one. It's training that pays off. 
Old soldiers will tell you that it's good training plus the best leadership that spells victory. Your United States Army has always emphasized both. Visit the United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station in your neighborhood and learn all the facts. Enlist in the United States Army today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. Now we present the second act of Special Mission. Close it up, close it up, keep moving. Franklin, get going. Well, it was a lovely explosion. Sighted one bridge, blue sand. Yeah, and look back there. Yeah, we're popular. Looks like the whole Nazi army's out after us. Move those skis, you dodgers! Well, I suppose we can be thankful for this blizzard, huh, Hans? Yeah, we cannot make good time in it. But neither can they. There's great danger in it, though, for they might stumble upon us. You... you want to keep moving all night? No, we, we must rest. For a time being, at least. The going ahead will be more difficult, and our, our hunters will not give up easily. Now I know what it feels like to be a fox. A half-frozen fox. You know, I remember one time... Yes, what we... is it, Sergeant? I, I think we got company, sir. Uh, coming from where? Up to the timber. Fowler and Doolin are on guard down there. All right. But, uh... Down, men, down! Hans, you're sure there were only eight in that patrol? Yeah, I cannot be positive, sir, but we, we checked back as far as we dared and found no sign of others. Uh, One of their advance patrols. They couldn't have known we were here, Bill. Yes, I realize that. I don't think they enjoyed committing suicide, but if one of them managed to get away, we... Sergeant, we move out in three minutes. cave, but to me, it looks like a palace. Oh, my aching back. We've been gone for four days or four years. Well, who cares? We gave him the slip. <laughs> well, we'll stay here and rest a day or two and then head for Snarza. Hans, we owe you and your friends our lives. Yeah, it was an honor to guide you, sir. Uh, and if we may, we will stay on the yacht as long as you have need of us. Hans, we'll have need of you from now until... Well, until it's time to go home. Now, grab that end of the map, will you, Glenn? Thank you. All right. This is where we are. In this mountain, right, Hans? Uh, yeah, sure. That is correct, sir. Uh -huh. Here's Snaza here at the end of the lake. There's the junction. You know it's well guarded, especially now. And Hans tells me it's about a day's journey. We'll start tonight, reach this point here... Uh, that's about two-thirds the distance. We'll hole up during the day, and sometime around midnight tomorrow night, we should be on target. You don't plan to use the same method of detonation, do you? No, no, we we'll use the time devices on this one. We'll probably break up into two-man teams with a central point of rendezvous once we get to Snaza. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Sergeant, everybody okay? Ready to knock it out of Ebbets Field, sir. <laughs> This storm is just what we needed, huh? Yes, sir, but the, the track is happily guarded on both sides. Well, how far from the track itself are they patrolling? About 100 yards from the embankment over which the track runs. Well, then once we get past them, we can climb the embankment. And in this snow and darkness, there's not much chance of our being spotted. <laughs> you make it sound easy, sir. It's a busy line, isn't it? Only as far as the bridge. And soon only as far as the embankment. Sergeant Rowe, gather the men around. Now, Hans, you and your boys will wait here until we're all back. If we're discovered, take off. Now, this is a pitch, guys. We're going to infiltrate in two-man teams. Now, first, let's get our watches synchronized. Moving toward the right. 
Yes, I see him. When he comes back and moves to the left, you go through. Keep right on going up the embankment. I'll wait till he moves to the right again. So far, so good. Plant your charges under the rail right here. I'll take the other side. Set the timing for 0230. I sure hope the other guys have been as lucky as we have. But if they hadn't been, Sergeant, we'd have heard about it in no uncertain terms. Now let's get cracking. Sir! <laughs> What's the matter? The rails are humming. Here, put your ear down here. It's a train. Wind's behind us. Can't tell how close it is. Maybe we better... Quick, grab that dynamite. Roll down the bank. You all right, Sergeant? Uh, Major, now I know what a bomb feels like. I was sure it was going to go off when I hit this ditch. <laughs> well, come on. Let's get up there again and finish this job. Sir, here come two more. Check them in, Sergeant. Right, sir. Two more to go. Who are they, Sergeant? Doolin and Fowler. And that leaves McDonald and Goldberg. But they may be lost, sir, in the snow. Perhaps A.A. could go find them. Can't afford you, Hans. If they're not here in five minutes, we'll have to go without them. It's 0200, sir. Thank you. Glenn, you have... let me wait here for them. We can catch up. And if they don't come... I'll only wait 15 minutes. And you'd never catch us or even find us in this snow. Sorry. I think I see them. I go out and guide them in. Oh, if Tom scares me like that again, I'll fire him. Where are you taking us, Hans? Back to the cave? No, sir. I could never make it. They will alert the whole countryside. There are some of my countrymen who will help them. It is best to head south, eastward. There are mountains, and on the other side, the Swedish border. Yeah, we'll keep going till dawn's light. It is best. Oh, will... uh -huh, right on the button. Now the fun begins. On a trail, that's for sure. Oh, no rest for the wicked. Sergeant, don't let those men straggle. Sir, they'll mend the flesh. At the rate of your traveling, they'll overtake us before we reach the top. Head for that stand of timber. I'll take four men and, and slow them down. Captain Sathers will be in charge if we don't catch up with you. Oh, you can't do that, Major. You got any better ideas, Lieutenant? Sure, let me stay behind and I can take a cup. <laughs> what are you bucking for, a promotion? Sir, would it not be better if you all waited for them in the timber and make the ambush? There's no cover out there. And no, it would not be better, Han. There may be no cover for them, but with the gang they've got, they could outflank us in no time. I plan to stop their advance patrol and hightail it. It'll buy us a little time. Sergeant! We'll wait until they're almost on top of us. We just clobber that patrol and hit the road, huh? That's all. It'll stop the main group. Make them think we're all here waiting to make a fight of it. Doolin, get your silly head down. Get ready, men. Now pour it at him. I thought I told you to keep going. A lucky shot, Nick Roberts. Hans and his boys are lashing a stretcher out of skis. Uh, how bad is he? Not too bad. Glenn gave him a shot of penicillin. Uh, you men, hold your fire. Tom, um, we've got to start down the other side of this mountain. Fast. If it brought along mortars, we'd be finished, but go ahead. Hans, how soon will he be ready to go? Ready now, sir. How far are we from the border? About 35 kilometers. All right, I want two of your best men to try and get Roberts there just as soon as they can. Glenn, show them how to use the penicillin. 
When they reach the border, they can take off his insignia and hand him over as a refugee Norwegian. Now, let's clear out of here while we're still able. Glenn, how many weeks you figure they've been chasing us? Well, I haven't kept track. Over a month. Look down there. Another patrol nosing around. Yeah. Must be spring. Only you never know it up here. You know something, Tom? Living on barley and wheat flour is a fine way to lose weight. Suppose we should be honored. The entire occupation force looking for us. Can't make up my mind whether it'd be better to have them catch us or just curl up and die of hunger and exhaustion. I think we better let the Major know about that patrol before we do anything. Speak of the devil. Now, what's he got to grin about? Maybe he enjoys this. Must you smile, Major Colby? Tom, what's the closest big town? Closest town? Yeah. Steinger, I guess. What do you want to do, blow it up? Understand they only got about 4,000 troops there. <laughs> What do you say we go down and take possession of it? Oh, Bill, sir, Major, you better sit down. Uh, be quite a sight for the townspeople, won't it? Fifteen half-starved Yanks and four Norwegian members of the underground, all in rags. Oh, oh boy, I'll bet they'd get a big kick out of it. <laughs> Sergeant, assemble the men. We're going to town. Now, wait a minute, Major. Just take oh, it easy. Oh, I forgot to tell you, men. We picked up some news on the portable a few minutes ago. All over but the shouting. The Nazis quit. What? Are you kidding? Lieutenant never questioned the veracity of a superior officer. <laughs> Especially when he tells you we just won a war. You young men who graduated from high school in the class of 52, listen to this. There's a real opportunity for you in the expanding United States Army, and you can continue your education, too. You see, the Army gives its soldiers the finest technical training in the world. Today's many soldiers go to excellent schools where they learn to do a job and do it right. What's more, in the Army, you can even get a college degree through USAFI, the United States Armed Forces Institute. And because our army is expanding so rapidly, promotions come fast. Remember, there's lots of room at the top. You'll lead an interesting, healthy life, too, and work side by side with other intelligent young Americans. Why not visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and find out what the army has to offer you? This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured a cast of outstanding players. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>